Okay, we are here in beautiful Radium, British Columbia with uh, probably one of the most interesting people I've ever met in my entire life, uh, Rolf. Yeah. Uh, Rolf, <laughs> here, right? Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing very good. You know, if I don't, if, if I wake up in the morning and look at the mirror, if I don't feel good, I go back to bed. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. <Yeah. laughs> so you moved to Radium from Switzerland uh, several years ago, 38 years ago, you are saying? Well, I, I actually immigrated to Quebec. Quebec, Quebec? Yeah. okay. And then I uh, lived in Quebec for a couple of years. I got deported from Quebec and then <laughs> I, I came to Canada, actually, you know. And then I got the band, I saw the mountains, which was just like Switzerland, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I took the bus, I got the radio, man, I have here since. That's 40 years now. <laughs> so now, why why radium? You probably could have lived anywhere else in the entire world, all of Canada. Why radium? I like the scenery, I like the small town of radium, I, I like yeah. the people here right away, I like the. The good looking chicks, whatever, you know. <laughs> so, um, so, as far as this, the House of a Thousand Faces goes, um, was it like this when you first built it, or did you uh, do some uh, renovating yourself? Well, uh, this was actually, I bought it as a motel. It had four units. Yeah. And this uh, was my living quarter. And then I, uh, about uh, in the early 80s, I used to drag home some early locks and all kinds of stuff and started making some clocks and no way yeah yeah so how did you know that uh kind of carving wood it would end up being uh your passion and what you would do uh for a living i had already a little bit of passion of when i was a kid i used to carve a little bit of wood you know actually you yeah. know, i used to make little figurines in my spare time and i could see i had a talent and then I thought, well, I need to have the proper location for that, you know, to be able to make commercially or something. So I bought this place back in 1979. Yeah, yeah. that's wicked. And uh, I got to ask you, you got goats living upstairs. Uh, what do you use them for? Do you, do you eat the goat or drink the goat milk or uh, are they just pets? <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> they're just pets, you know, my grand, great grandfather. He had goats, and I, I fell in love as a kid already with the goats. Yeah. And he was, had a house that was built into the hillside, and there was grass on the roof, you know, and because the avalanche came down from the mountain and went right over top of the roof sometimes, you know, the slides. Yeah. No yeah. big avalanche, just few slides, you know, when the hillside slid off a little bit. And then sometimes the goats were up there, you know, grazing on the roof, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Plus it was like insulation too, you know, the dirt on the roof. And then the skunks too, are pretty much your pets as well. Well, yeah, skunks, everything becomes my pet, anything that moves <laughs> in here. Except I'm not much a favor for cats and dogs, but I like, uh, you know, any wild animals, you know, mice, I love them, you know, I sit here at night, they give them sunflower seeds. Even the mice? <laughs> yeah, 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 everything, yeah, everything becomes a pet. Then. So, uh, one question that I got to ask you, you know, you're definitely a unique guy, uh, and I like it. Um, What's uh, wh why do you dress the way that you do? Um, you know, it's kind of, you're kind of like, you're like a wizard almost, right? But you, this isn't just for the shop. This is yeah. you dress like this all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know it started in in my early kid days. Yeah, I was uh, maybe about grade three or grade four. I got kicked out of school, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I had to go as a sort of a penalty, or I don't want to say it. Uh, with the girls to school. Yeah, so, yeah. so I went with the girls to school. And then uh, the teacher said about two, three weeks later, well, he can come back to our school again. And then that, that lady teacher I had, she said, no, 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 I want to have a boy in school. Because I was a, a unique kid on did them days. I, I would go sew, I'd go to sewing schools with the girls, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. knitting school, cooking schools, and the boys had their metal courses on their wood and work That's a good way to meet the here. girls, though, right? That's, right. And that's how you meet the girls, and, yeah. You learn a little bit more about the girls, so you got to start early, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so then, what, what what led you to kind of dress? And I, I always made dresses for myself. Really? And the girls said, oh, who's going to wear that dress? Well, my mother, I said, at first, but then I was wearing it myself. That That is, uh, that's unbelievable. So, um, what about, you know, you, you go traveling quite a bit. What about dressing in this clothes when you go to the airport? Is there ever an issue with security? Um, no. Well... Of course, they check me over. <laughs> yeah, I travel like this several times to Switzerland. I travel like this, you know. 
Uh, no big deal. It's no big deal. It's just, yeah, don't work too much underneath. In case you want to sleep, perhaps you just have to pull up your skirt. <laughs> they know what's underneath, right? <laughs> oh, God. Well, I want to thank you so much for doing this interview. And uh, if you're ever in Radium, make sure you uh, check out the House of a Thousand Faces with uh, Ralph here. He's a legend. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. <laughs>